Speculation in the stock market is soaring with retail investors piling into equities at a rapid rate this new year. We've seen GameStop soaring 685%. What is happening here to help us decipher everything today is Vince Lancy, founder of Echo Bay Partners. He's also considered an industry insider and a frequent contributor to ZeroHedge.com. Vince, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. Well, I had to bring you on today because, um, you know, as we're speaking today, Wednesday, shares of AMC Entertainment jumped more than 300% at the opening bell. We have GameStop going parabolic. We have Apple uh, shares being tossed around like a rag doll. Right. Um, you know, before I help, before I ask you to, to just explain the narrative here a second, have you ever seen anything like this in your entire trading career that really began when you were three years old? Uh, uh, only in isolated commodities, never across broader markets. So maybe natural gas in the wintertime or a hurricane, maybe silver when Warren Buffett bought it, but nothing like this, not even the flash crash or the collapse of 2008. This is big, I think. Okay, so what I want to accomplish today for our viewers um, and for myself, really, because it will be an educational piece for, for me as well, Vince, is, you know, who's behind it, who wins, who loses, and is this a short-term uh, trend or a, a real paradigm shift? So, so let's start with, you know, how this snowballed. Now, we know it, it happened on Reddit, but who's really behind it? We're, we hear, you know, we hear the theories that it's a bunch of kids who are bored, there's no uh, sports betting happening, and they took to this. But, you know, how do you see it? You can start with Bitcoin. One of the reasons that people care so much about Bitcoin, or one of the reasons that it's so uh, in the, in the uh, forefront, is because it's, it's about decentralized finance. I'm not saying Bitcoin itself is DeFi, but DeFi is about removing intermediaries, removing brokers and bankers and about things in the middle. So you're removing these centralized powers uh, that control the flow. And that's one of the attractive things in Bitcoin. And generationally, younger kids are, you know, by younger, I mean, you know, anywhere between 15 and 45, uh, they're, they're looking at the world in general as, in my opinion, unfair. And uh, call it call it um, activist uh, investing. So the Bitcoin kids are doing the same thing, and they're right. The reason this segues into GameStop and and the other stocks that are doing that is the markets have changed in three important ways. And 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 when I whenever there's like a live event going on, I look at it through three lenses: economic, regulatory, and technologically. Economically, who is making money? Who is losing money? So the Reddit kids, the, let's put it this way, retail is making money. Hedge funds that are shorting stocks and getting complacent about their risk are losing money. Market making firms that are dealers in options that are implicitly backed by the Fed are probably losing money. Retail investors are making money. And so, and so that's the economic win and lose. We can go through the names of the hedge funds, but there's more that are going. There's more that are going to come out. Technologically, the reason this is able to happen, the reason you can have things like uh, the technology of things like blockchain and DeFi and and retail brokers, it decentralizes the control that Wall Street has had. It puts the power. It's almost a populist thing. Putting the power back. It, it enables a kid to trade. Now I'm not saying he should. And the third thing is, is regulatory. Uh, how will the regulatory agencies handle this? And we are looking at, I think, um, to answer your question about um, uh, a sea change or a paradigm shift, we're looking at the logical long-term consequences of centralized planning by central banks combined with stimulus, which is needed now, combined with a destroyed middle class by what's happened in the pandemic. This has rattled Wall Street, right? There are theories that there are professional players also involved in this, that it's not just you know a bunch of kids that are bored. Um, how do you see that? Or what uh, are you- I would, not, I would not be surprised. Um, right. uh, uh, there, are, there are, I mean, you know, throughout history, whenever you have a populist or activist movement, there are always 
status quo or upstarts that have the impression of being uh, for the people, but they're really just they're really just tagging on to surf and make money on their own. So so there really is a groundswell. There is a problem, and 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 it's and it's this is kind of like Occupy Wall Street, except the kids doing it are capitalists. They're not socialists. So they're they're proving it with their money. They're taking risk. Isn't and, this a form of market manipulation? Um, I think the people that are the incumbents that have the most to lose will say yes. I think it's actually much less manipulative than what we've been led to believe is a real market. And by that, I mean, when you've got a million people in chat rooms saying, I'm going to do this, I want to do this, and then doing it with their money, $500, $1,000, that's infinitely more transparent than three hedge fund managers having a conversation in a room with a former Fed chairman saying, well, you take over this position and we'll do it really quietly so there's not a lot of volatility. It's actually less manipulative, in my opinion. Doesn't mean manipulators are not jumping on this bandwagon. Don't get me wrong. It fascinates me how this snowballed. I mean, I would love to know how many people were involved in the original chat and how many uh, there are today. Don't you find that interesting, Vince, how big this has become? You know, I, I don't... In my Twitter account, I follow uh, the uh, Reddit Wall Street Bets guys, and yeah. and and there have been a bunch for a long time. And you have, it's kind of like the 90s chat rooms, uh, only it's real time and they're doing work. Uh, and, and to answer your question, I don't know how big it was, but I think they've added a couple million users in the crazy. last two weeks. Absolutely, uh, absolutely crazy. So. Um, I guess, you know, what, you know, how do you see this, this playing out? How does it stop? Do the regulators, I mean, we're seeing it, you know, they're, they're halting trading, uh, but what happens next? Well, I mean, I know how this, I know how this ends and I know where it is. The path from where we are to how it ends, I don't know how we get there. And by that, I mean, this is where we are. We all can kind of figure out where we are just from what we're seeing. It ends with one of two ways. He's giving you a digital example. One is the government, the regulators, the people with the most to lose will, under the pretense, not necessarily false pretense, under the guise of protecting the public, protecting 401ks, will uh, uh, protecting investors, will intercede and throttle the access of speculative money. And then you'll have a return to order. I don't think that's going to happen, although they'll, they'll try and do that. The flip side is you have a reset. And I don't necessarily mean end of the world reset. I mean, I mean it's a meet the new boss, same as the old boss type of situation where the, the, the kid on Reddit uh, uh, becomes a hedge fund manager earning two and 20. Mm. Co-opted. So, so, you know, I'm a little bit all over the place on this because it's still developing. Yeah. But I think it ends, it ends with a clampdown. Yeah. Regulatory, technologically, as you said, okay, and economically, uh, they'll raise margin requirements. Uh, they'll prohibit options from being traded unless they're closing. They did this in silver in like 1987, I, I heard. I'm not that old. Um, uh, how we get there, I don't know though. Every time we speak, a clampdown happens immediately after, Vince. Right, right. Just saying, I'm <laughs> just putting That's it right. out there. Okay, wait, I had one more, more, more question because I, I'm learning a lot from you here today. Um, why GameStop? Is it generational? Like, why did they choose GameStop? This is opinion, but, you know, empirically speaking, GameStop along, GameStop along with about 10 other stocks has an enormous float of shorts. And that terminology, float of shorts, is let's say there are a million shares outstanding of a stock there are 1.5 million shares that are short. So people are borrowing more shares than exist and shorting the stock. Mm -hmm. So you have a large float or a large open interest of inventory of hedge funds that are short the stock for a long time, they're making money, they're complacent, they haven't gotten out. And so now what you have is you have these shorts get spurred to close because people start buying the stock, but people are buying options. 
And if you're buying options, you're actually controlling more stock than is actually right. out there. Right. Answer your question. GameStop had a start. When this started, GameStop had a had a had a uh, a float of about 150 percent of their uh, of their stock in in short. Uh, Bed Bath and Beyond. You talked to. We were off the yeah. air. Uh, you know, it doesn't seem like something that uh, millennials or, or or Generation Z or Zoomers, whatever you're calling them now, um, uh, would be into. But I think there are some people that know what they're doing doing this. Why GameStop? I guess my soundbite would have to be. These are video game kids that grew up playing video games. Why not start with GameStop? I, I guess my it's a wrap. Um, there's a lot of Wall Street big names saying, look, you know, don't entertain this. There are easier ways to make money. Don't step foot into the lion's den. Right. I mean, uh, this is very appealing. It's attractive. It's I, in your comparison to Bitcoin, it, it's kind of creating this FOMO. Like, I don't want to miss out on this GameStop, AMC, Bed Bath action yeah uh two answers one without saying names the people that are saying that have too much to lose to say anything else their jobs their careers their their um their biases are showing now it's a lot of the people on tv uh and to say that it's easier to make money a certain way how is it easier it's not easier to make money. It's, you know, it's easy to make money gambling. It's also easy to lose money. So if you're talking about, about what's going on right now, how hard is it if everyone's being given $1,500, $600 to just all buy stock at the same time? How hard is that? But, but to, to be realistic, this will end ugly. And who's going to be left holding the bag? The U.S. taxpayer will be. Because if a big firm blows out, yeah, well, because it ends ugly for whom? It ends ugly for anybody who's not long stock right. money. It ends ugly for taxpayers because in the end, and you know, I'm not condoning anything one way or the other, but in the end, if you go back to too big to fail, one of the reasons I think this exists is because of the acrimony that came out of too big to fail. The bank or the company gets bailed out. The airline gets bailed out. But right. what about my mom and dad? So now, now... Fast forward, and it's going to happen again, in my opinion. That's what I'm worried about. Meaning, uh, you've got hedge funds. You've got Melvin. They blew out. You've got uh, uh, Maple Lane. They blew out. And the other funds that are short stock will blow out. But what about the ones we haven't heard of yet? The float on these stocks is still very big on the short side, which implies that someone is still short. So when uh, a big hedge fund uh, like or a bank uh, – gets killed on this, we're going to hear about it. And they're probably going to get money to be a bailout. They'll be financed. And that'll be taxpayer money. Final question uh, before we wrap here, Vince. Does the mania suggest a major pullback is coming soon to stocks? For me, alarm bells are going off. And, and, and as counterintuitive as it might be to a layperson, you know, these stocks are going up. How is that bearish? Well, if you're a hedge fund manager and you have a hedge fund, you're long some things and you're short other things. So back in the 80s, when stocks cratered, people sold their gold hedge to cover their margin calls. You're seeing the broader stock market down with individual names exploding up 300%. People aren't making money. I think in the short term, you are seeing exactly what you're talking about you're seeing big institutions getting whipsawed. But in the long term, I think it will be like a cancer on the psyche of investors who want to continue trusting the market. Mm, wow. All right. This is a lot of, a lot of good information <laughs> you've brought us here today, Vince. I, I thank you. I appreciate you. This has been extremely educational and fascinating. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's, Thank you. It's fun to do this stuff. Yeah, I love it. And I hope you love it too. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned to Stansberry Research. We will have much more for you. In the meantime, remember to follow us on all our social media platforms. Thank you for watching. I'm Daniela Kambonin.